Allow me to reintroduce the show. This is The Gist, where I give you your weekly entertainment news updates, basically telling you the interesting things that happen in the entertainment world during the week. So you don't have to feel left out when you're meeting your friends over the weekend and they're talking about Siwa's new endorsements or Beyonce falling down or something like that. You just tell them, oh, it's true. I know. I saw it on The Gist. Get it? Yeah. So welcome to The Gist. Welcome to season two. I'm your host, Toyosi Phillips. <laughs> It feels so good to be back. And yes, we got a facelift. You guys tore my old set apart. I had to work with the feedback I was getting. Hope you guys have been good and hope you've been keeping up with the entertainment world happy to be back to help with that. So on the show today, I'm really excited about this show. It's Toluwa Lashe Falode, daughter of renowned sportscaster Aisha Falode. Her brother got murdered in Dubai last year and she published a book to share her pains. I spoke to her earlier via Skype and that interview will be coming up later. So on to the gist. I'm sure you guys already know that Bruce Jenner is now Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, goodbye man. Hello, woman. And the world we live in just got more interesting. Her signature was seen for the first time this week in a picture she took with one of her plastic surgeons. She gave the guy an autographed copy of the Vanity Fair mag, and people are already analyzing the signature. Apparently, you can say a lot about people by their signature. So those of you down to analyze the personality that Caitlyn will have, although I don't think it's going to be different from Bruce's personality, but yeah, you can look at the signature well. And her former stepdaughter actually said her, ha, yes, her former, that's Caitlyn's former stepdaughter, Kim Kardashian, made a statement this week. Kanye, her husband, turned 38, and she gave him arguably the perfect birthday gift. She rented out the Staples Center in LA, home of the Lakers, as a surprise birthday present for him. So him and his friends got to play basketball NBA style. And they were real NBA referees and cheerleaders. And of course, celebrity friends like 2 Chains and Justin Bieber and John Legend, who sang the national anthem. So cool. And that's not all she gave him. Oh, according to Paris Hilton, she's also building him his own private basketball court in their house. So a construction team was at their house on Monday to break the ground for the court. That was part of the birthday present. She, she knows how to give good gifts. God bless her. And you guys know that she announced that she was pregnant last week, but she shut down all the rumors surrounding the pregnancy, including that she's using a surrogate and she's having twins and she's expecting a boy. All that. She says she's having her baby herself and she's not having twins and she hasn't told anybody what the gender of the baby is so we should stop with the rumors. You know some people say she's carrying it up. Is a boy. Dan is a girl. This, that. She has said love you should stop. Wait for her to tell you what she's having. Then earlier this week, I couldn't help but laugh. Oh. There was this build up on Good Morning America. Beautifully put together teaser telling everybody to watch Good Morning America the next morning, Monday morning, that Beyonce had a huge announcement to make. Tomorrow morning, Beyonce has something amazing she wants you to know. This is something I have to share with everyone. So what is it? You're gonna love it. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. Right, Robin? Game on, baby! Of course, people were expecting her to give major news like she's pregnant or she's adopting a baby or she's releasing a new album or starting a new business, something. What did Beyonce say? Queen B. She was telling us about her vegan diet called the 22-day revolution. That was the big announcement. That was the announcement that people set alarms for so they could wake up and watch Good Morning America early in the morning. Of course, people were pissed, including members of her beehive, and they left pizza slices and fries and all sorts of food on her page to express their anger. I never thought Beyonce could do wrong in certain people's eyes, but alas, she can. Moving on. A novel was stolen this week. Oh, stolen, a major novel. Ask me which one. Grey. A finished copy of the new Fifty Shades of Grey was stolen on Sunday. Let me not lie, I was shocked as well. Not because the book was stolen, but because I didn't even know there was a new book coming out. I thought those three were the end of the story, but no, they are not. E.L. James had to write from Christian Grey's perspective, hence this new book, which has now been stolen before its release date. It was supposed to be released June 18, Christian Grey's birthday for lovers of Fifty Shades of Grey, and the fear now is that the book may be sold to a media publication that will release all the details defeating the purpose of a release. It's a serious issue and the police have been involved. Kent police, they are now investigating. Me, I just hope that 
the person wants to be like one of the first to read it and is not planning to destroy somebody's business because that's like piracy and piracy is no good. You cannot do that to another human being. It's not fair. And beautiful actress Zoe Saldana from Avatar, Guardians of the Galaxy, yes. She stared the hornet's nest this week. It was revealed that her husband, Marco Perigo, has decided to take her last name. So he's not going to be Marco Saldana. She said she tried to stop him, but he's not having it, so she has accepted it. And now she's trying to get the whole world to accept it. Of course, there has been major backlash, like people saying, how would you that? It's not a manly thing to drop your own surname and pick your wife's name, and why would you do a thing like that? And some even went as far as saying Zoe probably forced him to pick up her name because she has a more famous name. You know, people always come up with all sorts of theories, yes. But Zoe shot them down. She went on Facebook this week and said, why is it so surprising, shocking, eventful that a man will take his wife's surname? Women have never been asked if it's okay for them to give up their names. Why doesn't that make the news? Men, you will not cease to exist by taking your partner's surname. And then she went on to implore gentlemen to think outside the box and in fact remove the box and said, let's redefine masculinity. Hmm. To each his own, no, but dear future husband, please don't come to me with a suggestion like this. I'm begging you, please. No, you, no. Don't do that. Don't. Don't even. Don't. Even, mm -mm, don't. And do you guys want to know what will keep me up this weekend? Like, I literally am going to lose sleep over this, and I do not mind. You do? I'll tell you after the break. The gist. The gist. Welcome back. So before I tell you what will be keeping me up this weekend, I heard some interesting news about Delta Airlines and the LA International Airport. Delta has completed the $229 million upgrade of LAX Terminal 5. This terminal is being described as paparazzi proof. That's why it's interesting to me because it has the first ever private check-in lounge for Delta One customers. There is a dedicated curbside entrance that will lead to the private check-in lounge with a personalized luggage check. So from the car straight into the place, they even have their own security checkpoint, so they don't need to be mingling with the crowd. Mm. They've just increased my goals and aspiration in life. I have to enter that time. I have to enter there. And yes, what will be keeping me up this weekend? Orange is the new black. Ah, new season, June 12th. Father, this weekend, it's me and Netflix. I want to give a huge shout out to my GIA family, Globally Igniting Africa, the non-profit organization that takes care of women and children of Africa. They are set to empower lives and they are doing a good job at it. They put together a fabulous mentorship summit last week, basically to get people from different works of life to talk to other people who needed to be mentored. So Stella Damasos was there with her husband, Daniel Ademinoko, Tiffany the Budget Nista was there, Evelyn from Ankara, Miami was there, Adjua Jones. Stella Kinawa. It was just a room. Estefano. It was just a room full of like love and honesty. Everybody sharing their stories basically and advising others on how to just get through life. So there were topics like surviving tragedies and destiny and the future and stuff like that. It was really good. So I want to give a big shout out to Abby Oshoba. She put it together. Well done, ma'am. And FTK, well done. There will be a fashion show in Lagos in October. And when I get full details, I will let you guys know. I think it's something you want to be a part of. And we want to say congratulations to David O. He graduated from Babcock University's music department this week with a second class degree. Not sure whether it's upper or lower. He just said second class. But congratulations. You're a graduate, oh. And it was a good week for him because he also renewed his MTN contract. And for the first time, he shared a picture of him and his daughter on social media. Good news all around. Well done. Congratulations, everything. And speaking of endorsements, IK Osaki Odua just signed one mad deal with Airtel. Hmm? Movers and shakers of the industry. Now, we don't know what the, the, this thing is worth. <laughs> The endorsement, yes, we don't know what it's worth, but it's a lot because guess what? I can just bought a new house in VGC. It's not small money. You cannot buy it with just chicken change. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. So congratulations on the endorsement. And Tonto and the band celebrated their birthdays this week. Both of them are under the band's music label. The band turned 35 and Tonto turned 30. Happy belated birthday, guys. And some uh, dodgy news, M.I., yeah, M.I. Abaga, he drew attention to some disturbing conversation he had on WhatsApp with somebody 
who said he had been contracted to kill M.I. Now, M.I. said he was going to report to the police, but the guy said, oh, don't report. And something along the lines of, M.I. should not worry about it, that nothing is going to happen. And, yeah. Anyway, the guy's name and phone number and picture has been published all over social media. Yeah, it is well. It is well with you, M.I. I cover you. You are covered. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Okay, I'm happy to have this guest on the gist. Tolu Alashe Falode joined us all the way from Nigeria via Skype to talk about the experience of losing a brother. Hey. Welcome back, guys, and thank you for staying tuned. So before the break, I was telling you about uh, The Gift of Grace, sibling bond written by Toluwala Shefalode. She lost her brother in Dubai last year. He was allegedly pushed off a building, and she just published a book to share the pain that the family went through and how they've dealt with it so far. She's joining us all the way from Nigeria now via Skype, and we want to say thank you for joining us, Tolu. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Great, great. So how has it been this past year? Has it been dealing with the loss of your brother? Um, it's been very difficult. It's been a huge, um, a huge process for my family to, to understand and to be able to go through. Because losing someone so important to your family, your family being able to function, leaves a lot of gaps in trying to deal with the grief. And um, my mom has been going through her own process of grief. I've been going through my own process of grief. But we just thank God that through it all, he's been faithful. It's been over a year. It's not getting any easier. And in some ways, it does get worse when you have certain accomplishments. Or for example, a couple of days ago, he would have been 21. So there are difficult days and difficult months, but I'm just grateful for God being faithful to my family during this process. Yeah, yeah. Accept our condolences. So you just published you. this book, Gift of Grace, a sibling bond. What yes. do you want people to get from reading the book? Gift of Grace, a sibling bond is basically my experience in losing a loved one. And I hope that in sharing my story, I help other people to go through their own pain and their own process of dealing with grief. I also hope the book helps people to see that even though we all have our um, issues to deal with in life, God is there to help us because that is my own story and that is how I've been able to deal with what has happened to my family through the gift of grace, which is why um, the book was aptly titled Gift of Grace, a sibling bond. It was through the bond with my brother that I experienced the grace of God in my life. Yeah, okay. Not to make you cry or anything, but how was your relationship with your brother? It was special. It was extremely special, and I don't think I realized that much until he passed. Mm. I just realized how much he was important to me being able to function as a person, because when he died, I was very lost. I didn't know who I was anymore. So much of my identity was wrapped up in who he was, and I didn't know that till he had passed. So it was truly a unique relationship that I didn't fully grasp, and I don't think I fully understand till now. Mm. Um, but he was a, he was a very special he was a very special young man. Has writing always been a passion of yours? No, this this is um, this 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 whole process of discovering. That's why I say I, my relationship with my brother was very special because in his passing he brought out more of who I was as a person that I didn't even know I could be. I didn't know I could write as much as I didn't know I could write ten pages not to talk about writing a whole book. book. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 been a, a process of self discovery for me in so many different ways. I've never written anything consciously before or subconsciously or unconsciously rather. What happened was in order to deal with the grief, I needed. I needed to do something. So I just found myself writing and writing and writing. And that is how the process accidentally came into the writing of a book. I can't even begin to imagine what your family has gone through. I've never lost a sibling, so I cannot say I understand. But I'm just glad to see you being strong and see you actually using you. the energy positively. Um, so the murderer is known, the alleged murderer, because he hasn't been charged. Or has he been mm -hmm. charged now? 
No, the alleged murderers face Allah Dak Maria Al Nasir, and who is Saudi Arabian, and Olivia Melanie Richards Evans, who is British, have not faced any charges till today, and. Um, that, that, that is very painful for, for me, and I can't imagine for my mom to grasp, given the fact that we've provided all the information, we've gone beyond what we should have to go as a family, and still no step has been taken by the government, because this is a case that is very much in the hands of the Nigerian government, because it happened in Dubai, it happened on foreign soil. So there's nothing we can do as a family. We have to move as a people. But yeah. unfortunately, the government of this country hasn't done anything about it. And to think these people are living their lives like, like they didn't take someone's life mm. is, is difficult. It's difficult. Okay. Have you forgiven the murderers? Um, in so, some, some days, I've, it's very difficult to forgive because I think they've stolen so many memories from me. Mm. They've stolen so many memories from my family. They've stolen moments. They've stolen dreams. Yeah. My brother was, a, was such a passionate young man. Toba, Toba was Tyler Hendricks Frey. That was his musical alter ego. He was so driven. He was so filled with purpose. He, he would tell me he painted his dreams so clearly for me to see that when he died, I really couldn't grasp the reality of what was happening. Yeah. So... It's very difficult to say I've, I, I, for me to confidently say I've forgiven them, but I say God has given me peace. And that is how I will be able to respond to that question. I would not be able to say, you've taken my, you took my brother's life and I am in a point in my story just over a year later where I can fully say I've forgiven you for, for doing such a thing to me and my family. Right. Okay. Let's talk about this book. Where can people purchase it if they if they want to get it? Well, the book is available on conga.com now. Okay. It's um it's it's been available since the 19th of May online. If they just go to conga.com um gift of grace. It's um it's readily available there and it will be it will, you would get a copy in the space of a couple of days. It will be available from Latin, at Latina bookstores in Victoria Island from next week, Monday. Okay, okay. And are you on social media? Is there any way people can reach you if they want to connect with you? Yes, on Instagram, my handle is Fan the Flame. Um, and on Twitter, it's Tolu Falude. Can and you on spell, Facebook, spell Fan the Flame? Okay, it's F A N T H E. F L A M E. Great. And on um, Twitter, it's Tolu Falode, T O L U F A L O D E, all together. And on, I have a blog as well. It's called the Flame of Faith. Blogspot.com. Um, that's the dash flame dash of dash faith. Blogspot.com. And also on Facebook, actually, at Tolu Falode. Um, colon gift of grace before i let you leave do you have any word of advice to anyone who is going through a loss or dealing with a loss right now i would say god is truly your strength and i'm so sorry for whatever loss you have experienced because honestly it's not an easy process and i just i just I just like to express my condolences and I pray that you use this process of pain to find out more of your purpose and don't in any way harbor any guilt because whatever form of death came into your home, it was not your fault. Hmm. That's, that's, that's what I would like. Great. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us, Tolu. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. End of the show, guys. Thank you so much for watching. That was a touching interview for me. I cannot even begin to say I understand what she went through, what her family has gone through. But I thank God for the grace and the strength that the family has right now. Um, yeah, so <laughs> thank you again for watching. Don't forget to follow me on social media, on Facebook, The Gist with Toyo C. Phillips, on Instagram, The Gist with Toyo C. Phillips, and on Twitter, yes, we're on Twitter, The Gist with TP. That's the only difference. Oh, sorry, Toyo C. Phillips was too long. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget, you can be everything you want to be. The Gist. Yeah.